Everyone has a different reason for why they carry and even what they carry. And whether you're just a collector, a maker, or someone who really uses their shit, we want to hear your story. Welcome to the Carry Culture Podcast. What's up, guys? Chris here from Carry Culture Podcast. And on this week's episode, episode 16, we have Mike Barbarian Brownie. Or Brownie. What's going on? What's going on? How are you Thanks doing for today? having me. Yeah, of course, man. It's a pleasure. Um, so yeah, let's dive into this. Um, can you tell us about yourself and how you got into the rabbit hole of the EDC community and how long has it been? Oh man, it's, it's been since day one, I would say, honestly, uh, it's, this, 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 this could be a long one. So yeah, what got me into EDC, my grandfather carried a little case knife my entire life. And I thought it was the same case knife for the longest time, but I realized he kept buying new ones because he would break them in and he'd use them. And my dad always carried a knife. He carries the Leatherman right now. He got me into EDC. I thought just carrying a knife was a normal thing. Didn't think anything of it. So I carried knives going to elementary school, getting in trouble. Uh, they'd say you can't <laughs> have that. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a thing forever. And then I got in the Boy Scouts and I won my totem ship so I could carry a knife. So EDC has always been a big thing. And I guess a couple of years ago, I'm trying to think how long it would have been. Maybe let's just let's just put a number on it. Say four years ago. Got watching YouTube. Um, I was watching stuff for Pew Pews and, you know, watching, you know, how people carry it, you know, how I wanted to carry it and uh, kind of got down that rabbit hole saying, oh, what's this? And uh, I think Taylor Martin uh, was showing off a a beer bomb. And I oh, said, this, yeah. first thing I said is like, I want one of those. I'm going to get one eventually someday. Don't know when, <laughs> don't know how, but I'm going to get one. And I just kind of got in that rabbit hole. I've seen people posting pictures of it. and. I don't know. I think it was March of 22. Let's just say I said, I'm just going to make a Instagram page so I can follow other, you know, fellow EDC people, I guess you could say, and yeah. I want to see what they're carrying. And it kind of dropped down from there. And then it was just like, I'm stuck to in. I want to, I want every single knife. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I was carrying uh, this knife. I, I brought this out. Yes. I, I planned it. <laughs> it was, this is the knife that kind of started things. I thought this was the oh, a little gas station knife. Yeah. Well, I actually got it from Shields from my local sporting goods store. And I thought, you know, this is oh, nice. Nice. this is it was like 45 <laughs> bucks. I was like, I've got something, you know, it's got this glass breaker on the back, you know, when it flips out, you know, I was like, this is sweet. This is, this is, this is, this is the knife. I'll never have to replace it. And then uh, I don't know how long ago it was after that. I got the bench made. Grizzly Ridge. I know, I know you're going to say, you're going to say, you're about to say Griptilian because that's Griptilian. what everybody has said on this show. Everybody I watched, their first Benchmade, our first EDC <laughs> knife was a Benchmade grip. Mine was the Grizzly Ridge, and this is what basically started everything. Oh, damn. That's actually a nice one. I've never seen that one. You've never seen? Oh, so, well, no. you might have seen these are usually orange. So the gravery or the plastic is usually Possibly orange. Possibly kind of resembles like a bug out. Oh, yeah. This is. Honestly, my opinion, this is like the bug out's bigger brother. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks solid though. It looks like a star. Oh, it's, oh, it's pretty big. It's not much oh, okay. larger. Oh, it's not that much bigger. No. Wow, it does look like a bug out. Just yeah. like a sturdier it's just version. A bigger brother. You've got uh steel liners. I don't know if I can see that, but it does have steel liners. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's more fidgety than the bug out. But yeah, the Grizzly Ridge is what started all. I did have to switch out the the uh, clip to a deep carry and after okay. that i was sucked in doesn't like, that make need, it so much better man you spend you spend over a hundred dollars spend over 150 i think this was like i want to say it was like 180 i can't remember exactly but it it, it sucked good. me in after that and then i was like that's the knife i'm going to keep forever and it, it didn't last long i was like i i gotta get a knife i gotta get another one i gotta try this i gotta try another brand and next thing you know um I've got a closet full of boxes and uh, a toolbox full of knives. <laughs> the boxes are the worst. <laughs> oh man, and and you don't want to get rid of them. them away. Exactly. Yeah. I I've thought about. I was like, oh well, I'm I'm not going to sell them because I'm not I'm not in the market of selling my knives. I buy them. They're for me. Uh, I I beat up my knives. You can see like this one. I mean, this is probably my most beat up one. You know, you can just it, it's it's had its wear and tear, oh, yeah. but I don't ever carry it anymore. My bug outs beat up and. I don't buy knives for other people, buy them for myself. So if I customize it yeah. like my Chavez or something like that, I you know, 
I do it for myself. So I could throw the boxes away. What am I saving them for? I have no idea. No it's just, idea. it's something about keeping it. You see it, you're like, should I throw this away? And then you think yeah. maybe one day I might need it. Exactly. Exactly. And you never, it, it, I don't, like I said, closet full of, of boxes of empty boxes of knives and then toolbox full of knives that half of them I don't use because I found something better or I, it's not quite as what I want. And I, I should just sell them so I can invest in more knives. But yeah. I have a problem. I have a hoarding problem. I can't get rid of stuff. And I think a lot of us do that. We were, yeah, we relate there. It's it's very hard because so, like you you put it up for you put it up on your cell rack. Like I have a cell rack behind me. It's just a little spot okay. that I'm like oh, I might sell this, but then it ends up yep. going back into my collection. I'm yep. like ah, this is actually kind of cool. Boom, put it back. Yep. There. That's it's so true. And I wish I could get rid of things. My wife is always like, why don't you just sell that and then buy another knife? Or use that money. It's like, eh, but I'd rather have them both. <laughs> what if I, what, like yeah. you just said, what if I want to carry it next week? Yeah. Or my main reason is, you know what? I'll just keep this one and I'll take it camping and just beat the shit out of it. Yes. Or outdoors, whatever. Just like it'll be yep. a beater. Turns into yep. a beater. Which is really funny. I, th- I know, I know this isn't the questions, but I got to ask you if you're going to go out camping, you just said that you're going to take that as a beater knife. Do you, is it a cheap knife or an expensive knife? I don't really have any more cheap knives. Okay. So, is it a yeah, lower give, ends knife then? Um, like right now on my rack, there's a, there's a Pena, there's a Giant Mouse, there's a Vero, a McNeese, Dang. and a CRK. Okay. All, all Grails and that Giant Mouse. So the reason I ask this is because I've got an SE Azula and I will beat the heck out of that because it's cheap steel, but it's, it's not a high end steel. So, uh, compared to my Chavez, yeah. no, my Chavez is actually my new beater knife, but M390, that, that steel should be able to do whatever you throw at it, but I would rather yeah, use that SE to beat up and it's a cheaper knife and it's a cheaper steel, but this should be the one that you use because it's premium grade yeah. materials. Why don't I just beat this up? We use that, it that's why like I asked the question. Expensive box cutters. Literally. literally. <laughs> it, it, and that's how I, kind of I am. Like the EDC is stuff I carry, but it's also stuff I collect. So I'm kind of a collector and a user at the same time. Yeah. So what is your favorite aspect about the EDC community? The community part. Um, I, like I said, I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know the community was a thing. And being that we all have this common, you know, love for just putting things in our pocket you know uh, our knives you know uh, a beer bomb like it, it, it showed this to any one of my uh, non-edc friends like why do you carry that why do you want that thing they don't understand but like you you yeah. get it this yeah, this yeah. isn't a tool it's a fidget spinner it's it could be oh, a tool i actually have mine in front of me too heck yeah oh yeah this is the first piece of pocket art that I saw as well that I was like, ooh, this, what is that? And then it sucked I looked you in. For it, and it was sold out and I was like, oh, I can't find it anywhere. And then, uh, yeah, I got one and now I have a lot of them. Well, my first beer bomb is uh, actually the one I'm carrying today is out of your collection. You broke my. Oh, you yeah, broke I my love yours. that one. The thinner That's one. That's the now OG. Thinner yeah. One. He, uh, I heard, I don't know, but I think he's coming back with more. I heard it on, on Mikey's live. Yeah, I believe so. I believe he is, if I'm not mistaken. Because, yeah, those are cool because you can slip them into, you know, your organizers better. Like, yeah, it's kind of thicker, exactly. So it makes the organizer thicker. You don't have any more left? Did I really take your last no. one? No. Yeah, because oh, I have another. Bo- oh, yeah, it's almost, damn, almost half. Yeah. I'm probably 50% bigger. I mean, smaller thinner yeah that was the only one i had i have a black one so i was like oh i'm just gonna get rid of this one because i like the thick one at the time but i was like i should have got rid of the thicker black one i would have i would have bought either one of them at the time i just wanted one i didn't want a micarta one i wanted my first one to be titanium i wanted a solid one that i can actually open a bottle up with or whatever yeah you said hey you'll get rid of it i was like sold sold (laughs) <laughs> so you are actually the one who broke my cherry, pop my cherry. Oh, yeah. it goes. That's awesome, dude. Um, so 
So tell, can you tell us about some of your favorite pieces of gear as well as some of your favorite makers? Oh man, community? that list is so long. A list of makers and gear. Well, I got to say awesome Hank. He introduced me to carrying a Hank. And of course he's in my corner all the time helping me out. Uh, Dickinson Trading Post makes pouches. He's actually who brought me into carrying a pouch, even knowing why I should have a pouch. So he's, he's the one who broke me in on that one. Of course, you know, you got uh, High Tide EDC, Pocket Filth, um, Notorious EDC Tom. Oh, man. I mean, th this list could just go on. I mean, it's when, when I say favorite gear, those are the favorite makers, of course, you know, because you got Tom, yeah. Notorious EDC, uh, Mike Cruz, Inky EDC. Um, Peter McKinnon, is he considered a, a maker or a creator? Because he, I mean, he's, he's, he's in the community. Because he's probably he's the reason I art. do a lot of stuff. I mean, Photos are art. Yeah, because he, he's probably one of the reasons yeah. I even do a lot of stuff. I, I watch him. I, he's what got me into YouTube. So I, I can call Peter yeah. McKinnon maybe one. But man, that, that list yeah. could go forever. Do you have any, any of your favorite pieces of gear in front of you that you'd like to show off? Oh, besides the beer bomb? Um, my Chavez is one of my favorite pieces of gear. Yeah, you've had that ever since. Yeah, it's I met you. It's my go-to. Um, you were actually my channel into the community. I met oh, you that, first, that, and you brought me into this. I forgot whole that. World. Yeah. So I I broke you into this. My bad, and you yeah. broke me into the, the beer <laughs> bomb. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend was like, "Hey, why don't you just make an Instagram page so you can follow all these people and share your content?" I was like. I never thought started. about it. I was like, okay, yeah. And then you were like the first person I added. And then you put me into the uh, EDM Discord. Yes. And then I met Alan. And then Alan was like, hey, look he at all is this an instigator. Like, yeah. he, he's the one who kind of brought me into these uh, these stocks. Like, this is from uh, my EDC yeah. and me. Like, he's the that, that's ambassador. a fun piece. I, I don't really carry it that often, but it always sits at my work desk. And it, I just sit there and all the time that's a piece Dude, of grail gear one. that i think is cool or i shouldn't say grail gear a piece of gear that i just really like yeah uh, i had else? one of those it had a magnetic bottom and i was sitting down having lunch and i stuck it onto the table and i walked away from it somebody's <laughs> happy somebody got a sweet find did you have a cool keycaps on it or anything it was the walsh metalworks and it had oh, the nice. the frag top oh that's a oh, uh, bummer. I was kind of sad about that. Yeah. yeah. I went back and I was like, oh, some, why did somebody even take this? Oh man. If those keyboards, like, like I got a mechanical keyboard, mine's white, black and orange and everything. I got a pirate key on there. I, I don't know if I can pick it up or not. So these keys, if you go on like target Walmart or any place like that, or even Best Buy, if any of those keyboards are out, Hold up. kids are taking those keys off. So I bet you as soon as somebody, somebody was probably eyeing that up when you were leaving and was like, that's mine. As soon as you walked away, somebody took that. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Like, I would think nobody outside of the EDC community would find any value or any utility to that thing. Like, what is this? They'd probably wonder, what oh, is this? Oh, yeah. Well, you'd be surprised, though. I mean, the stuff that we'd carry in the EDC community carries on to, like, gamers. You know, um, keyboards and all that stuff. Gamers like that stuff. Fidgety stuff. I, I would bet yeah, a true. lot of EDC guys are not the exact same and when kind of going back to your other question you know as far as what i like about the community is we're all into the same thing but at the end of the day we're also completely different but that edc yeah. is what brings us together like when i say community that's, that's what i mean like yeah. i'm into football i'm into sports camping but i know there's other guys in the edc community that are into the exact opposite who hate football hate camping yeah and but we have this common ground and we're friends that's what's cool about it. Yeah, that's true. You're absolutely right about that. Um, can you tell me about a time that a piece of gear you were carrying really got you out of a jam? Oh, man. Um, most recently, I would say a jam, more of a flex. Um, over at my uncle's place, he just moved and he had a, a computer chair he wasn't liking. It was like really wobbly. And uh, it was kind of like that superhero moment like that we all strive for in the EDC community. <laughs> I pulled out my SOG power pint and I fixed the chair up. I said, take a seat. And he sat down. I was like, oh, you fixed it. And I didn't plan on going over the fix anything. We went over there to hang out. So 
it didn't get me out of a jam. It got me more of uh, bragging rights, you know? Because I think you're probably yeah. the same way. Anybody got a knife? Immediately. Immediately. I've, yeah, I've, I've, in my group, I've always been the one that's like, hey, he probably has it. Yep. So yep. kind of like we had an interview with Mike Cruz, and he was talking about how he's the guy in the group that if he doesn't have something, they're like, what do you mean you don't have it? Yep. That's how yep. I'm like super prepared. I got like everything that I would need. Everyone's like, oh, it's the, a little excessive. I'm... The Swiss army knife of our friend groups maybe is what you could say. We are the Swiss <laughs> army knife. We have it. We've got a yeah. tank if you need something cleaned up. We've got a blade. We've got, uh, you name it, fingernail clippers. I, that's, that's something I carry a lot. I'm waiting for the opportunity to be like, yo, bust out the beer bomb to use it for something. Whoa. I have yet like, to do what that. Is that. I have yet to do that. What did I, I used, uh, what word was that? I can't remember. I was opening a beer bottle and I can't remember where I was, but I used my, uh, my Leatherman. I've got the signal and it's got that bottle over first time I yeah. ever used it. And I was like, that was cool. Cause I, I, I should have used the beer bottle. That would have been a sweet opportunity. Like you said, but I used my Leatherman instead. Yeah. Well, it sucks. Cause at restaurants, they open the bottles for you. Yes. So sometimes yeah. I tell them, Hey, can you leave the bottle? Like I had my keystone on me one time and I told the waitress, I'm like, can you leave the bottle cap on there? Cause I wanted to record you actually using it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Pop but out I, the I phone I... and you're taking yeah. pictures. Like it, the, the classic Instagram, taking pictures of your food, but you're actually taking pictures of your EDC gear and food. Yeah. Oh, um. I guess I did remember. I did write this one down here. So what got me out of a pinch also using my Benchmade bug out. This is my lawn mowing knife, my beater knife. And I don't know if you can see it, but it is just beat up on each end. And that's yeah. not that bad. You can't really tell. But this is my lawn mowing knife. And my lawn mower I should fix. But I have to take the spark plug out to <laughs> turn it off. I've got it zip tied on there. It, it runs so great. So I was like, I don't want to mess with it. So to turn it off, I take my bug out of my pockets every, every time. And for some reason, it's the only knife. And I pull the spark plug wire out and I use the Benchmade bug out. So in a bind, there's, there's a reason for my knife. Yeah. Dude, there, I feel like there's always something you can use some of, a lot of this gear for oh, on yeah. a daily basis. I mean, I, mean, I, I always, I use the pry bar a lot. Yep. It's the one thing that I'm always like, oh yeah, boom, because I don't like using my knife to. I'm I'm the same or... way. I don't I don't like wrecking the blade. I mean, there's new knives that I probably could and they can take up there, but you're right. The pry bar is the most underrated tool. I mean, what did I do? I, I was know. painting my wall one time, and I used the pry bar to take the uh, the outlet covers off. I used that to undo oh, yeah. the screws, and then turned right around and used that pry bar to open the can of paint. Yeah. I feel like it's it's probably the most utilized tool of mine. And also, it can act as like, you know, a self-defense tool. If oh, you need absolutely. It yep. In a bind. Yep. This one's a long one, so. Oh, the lynch one. Yeah, there's, nice. a, there's just, yeah, it's the long lynch. I like that. I just like because you can just hold it, you know, and use it as a tool. And it's TSA friendly. Yeah, yeah. I... I just recently traveled and I was going to bring my beer bomb, but I was so, so worried about bringing it because I didn't want to get, I didn't want to lose it. My wife, yeah. on the other hand, got a knife confiscated. That was funny. Dude, wait, they found the knife on her? So, not to throw TSA under the bus, but it was on our way back. She had a mm -hmm. knife in her purse, which was in a bag, and... We made it out to our travels, but it was on the way back that they like, uh, we're going to take your bag. We got to look at something. And they found it was a cheap 5.11 or something like that. And, uh, yeah, they, they actually asked us if we wanted to take it on our, like, uh, our check-in yeah, luggage. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't do a check-in and we're like, no, we don't have a check-in. So just take it. <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. Cause, right? uh, on my way back from Atlanta, I had a McNeese in my backpack and I, it went right through. And I really? came home, yeah, and I was looking in my check-in bag, and I was like, where the hell is my McNeese at? And then I remembered, I put it in my backpack when I went to the show, and I went, I 
opened the spot and it was right there. And I was like, how the hell did this make it through TSA? Was it titanium? And it was a, yeah, but the blade is magna cut. The blade is, yeah. Wow. Uh, Magna cut is a uh, powdered steel, right? I believe so. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure how they, now you got me thinking, I'm going to have to do a little research. How did that make it through? Did you have some like clothes around it or something? It was in my backpack in just a little slot. It just hmm. shoved into a little pocket. And Man, did you get lucky? I that would have been that would have been heartbreaking to lose that. I know, and I, it was one that I got from the show, so it was fresh, brand new too. Oh, that would have yeah. been heartbreaking. That would have been heartbreaking. Yeah, I probably would have put it on my check-in bag, but might have missed my flight. I don't know. I yeah. I don't know what I would have done, honestly. <laughs> It made that, it through. Yeah. The, oh man, you, you I was just lucky. like, damn. I was on the plane with that thing. Like, dude, it could have been bad. That's crazy. So, as a content creator, what are some of the uh, challenges that you face? Time. Time is the biggest challenge because I got a full time job. I got two kids, and I I want to focus all my dad life, I guess you could say towards my kids. So the time is really hard. So there's times when they, they're at daycare and it's right before I got to go to work. I'll throw in some content, take some photos, uh, try to make some shorts, some reels and long form, and then I'll edit and I'll stay up late at night. So I don't get much sleep. You don't get much sleep as a dad in the first place, but yeah. as a content creator, dad, it's even, even less sleep. So that's the biggest thing just having the time because i've got the ideas i mean if i had if i had the time to do it man i'd be cranking a video like every single day i'm not talking like shorts it'd be like long form videos i got some fun ideas i want to do it's just the editing process and and filming it and i'm a one-man show you know that's that's the hard part and it's kind of hard because you do lives yeah i'm gonna say that's that's what makes me want to do lives and also the lives are fun to engage with people and talk hang out you know to me that's just the fun part about doing lives uh, yeah but the other thing that just is so hard with content creation it's not the burnout the, what causes the burnout for me is i spend some time on a video and it flops i'm a numbers guy i'm looking at the the numbers you know, how many views did this get or why is this not going well and then i, th- I think what is it the time of day did i not do good at the content and I can take, you know, people saying, hey, Brownie, that video sucked. You, you shouldn't make that video. I'll take that. But it, when it's yeah. the unknowing, you know, it's the, the, the algorithm. But the algorithm is people. And that to me is the hard part, you know, the unknowing. Why didn't that video do well? And I, I got to stop looking at the numbers. So that's probably yeah, the hardest part. I was about to say, you can't really look at that. You have to just look at it like you're doing it for yourself. Yes. Yes. That's how I feel like you're doing it yep. for yourself. Eventually, you know, people will catch on to it. But mainly, I feel like doing it for yourself is what's going to keep you. Yes. Going. Yes. I 100% and, agree. I, yeah. I do content for myself. Like, so that's the only reason I even got into doing making content. I wanted to see what other people are doing. And then I wanted to share what I was doing. So if I saw somebody carrying a really cool knife and I had that knife, I wanted to share it off too, because I want to see that. I want to see what gear it is. Cause I know there's other people out there like me who just want to see other people's stuff. You know, that's what got me yeah. into taking photos of it and then getting into YouTube and making videos. I know that people just want to see that stuff and I got to be yeah. less hard on myself when, you know, they just haven't seen it or maybe, maybe they don't actually like what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of competition in this space for sure. How do you plan on taking your content to the next level? See, I don't look at it as competition. I mean, there's a lot of guys that start out in the YouTube or same time as me. And I don't look at it as competition. I know when I go live, I may joke and say, oh, so-and-so is going live. I can't compete. And I don't really mean it as competition because I think we're all like us in the community when it comes to you know social media and stuff. We don't really, I, like I said, I don't look at it as com- competition. Like um, I'll use Mikey, for example. I wanted know help him he wants to help me it's more of a kind of a group thing like like you guys like i love like watching your stuff or like when i said you know somebody's going live when i i I go i'm a very spontaneous person and i go live 
typically at a certain time, but sometimes I'll go live at a different time. But if I see somebody else that's going live, like let's just say like a big, big name brand or big, big person. I don't yeah, know yeah. Where it would be EDM Brandon, you know, he's going live. Well, I'm not going to go live. And it's, I, I joke like, oh, I can't compete with him. No, it's really because I want to be watching him. I want to watch. I don't want to be going live. Yeah, I yeah. want to watch his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's kind of, it kind of sucks when two people are going live at the same yeah. time because you have to share the audience. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like us as a community, and, and I, I, like I said, I, it, it is a community thing. We're all here to hang out, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, oh, come watch my stuff. You know, I, I want to watch yeah. that stuff and I don't want people to, to be like, oh, who should I watch? So and so or, or Brownie, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't want that. Like I said, that, that's to me, yeah, that's, that's that's not competition I don't, downfall. don't care for. But it's yeah, separating myself I mean, from other people, just being myself, just being who I am. Guys, and Yeah. Yeah. And you guys can't all get together and be like, hey, I'm going live at this time. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to go live at that time. Well, who's going to nope. drop their live? Yep. And that's kind of why we try to keep things planned out or. You know, if I go live on a on on a random time, I know that somebody may not be going live, and if I don't know, I want to find out because, like I said, I, I I'd rather not go live and just watch what they're doing. I I just enjoy yeah. the hangout. Yeah, that's that's important. I feel like. So, what are you and Mikey still doing? Don't you guys have a show together? Um, because of my new shift, Mikey and I haven't had a chance to link up and do a collab live in a while. I really want to. Um, I, yeah. I honestly loved hanging out with him, doing a collab live back and forth. Um, I work a new shift and he works the days and I work nights. I work until 10 30 PM at night. So that's, it's just, you know, it's just hard to link up, especially different time zones because I think he is a couple hours behind me. So when yeah. I'm at work, he's, that's the time he's available. Once again, the dad life, the time, the time is hard. He's a father now too. Yep. Father two, am I right? Or Father, coming yeah, up? I think two now, or getting there, yeah, getting there. I think, yeah. What What do you do outside of EDC? Oh man, well, of course, Father two is the biggest thing. Um, I think when I started uh, getting into EDC and getting into this this hobby, um, before that, I was I was playing semi pro football. I used to be a competitive bodybuilder. And uh, oh, nice. I kind of dropped all those things. So now it's really just being with the family. Uh, camping is my big thing. I love being outdoors, camping, hunting, fishing, um, those types of things. You know, stuff I can do with my kids. You know, I can't bodybuild with my kids and my wife. I can't play football not, yet. Not yet. So eventually, now that I don't play football anymore, obviously, I plan on you know getting them in the sports if they want to be, of course. But really, yeah, yeah. right now, just being with the kids and, uh, like I said, camping, being outdoors, taking advantage of the, the EDC gear. <laughs> yeah. Where? What state are you from? Minnesota. Min Minnesota, right? Yeah. Yep. Damn, it's probably beautiful out there to go camping. Oh, man, the summer, it's great. Spring and fall, if you ever come to Minnesota, that's the time. Winter, we can be negative 40, and then in the summer, we can be 100 plus. Damn. Yeah, it's a swing. We got negative the biggest closet. 40. Oh yeah, we got the, the biggest, the biggest closet. closet. Oh. Closets. If, <laughs> the if you open up my my closet, you're gonna see a <laughs> pair of Carhartt bibs, winter boots, jacket, hat, gloves, and then on the other side of it, you're gonna see flip flops, Crocs, and a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just it's 100 swing. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you get the extremes of both sides. Yeah, yeah. That's why fall and spring is perfect like right now coming That's, in i yeah. mean it's like 50 degrees out perfect reminds me of like alaska like yeah. minnesota i feel like would be like alaska except we have daylight in the winter they go like <laughs> days without daylight don't they because because you lived in alaska didn't you no i didn't live there i have family oh. up there i went and visited and oh, okay. um i thought it was beautiful it, i thought well, it was very nice is it there. true though that they don't have sunlight certain times of the of the year like for like um, it's not that they don't have sunlight it's they have very minimal sunlight like how okay. we have over here like say 12 hours of the day is light over there it's like six oh, and the see, rest I, is just okay dark. that would be hard that i didn't see hard. that though okay yeah my i went it was like the sun actually yeah, i did the sun was coming out around 9 a.m 
and it was going down around three, four. Oh, wow. That would, yeah. Yeah. I think in the winter, ours, it would be like five o'clock. It'll be dark, but that's only a couple months out of the year. But yeah. yeah. It, it, Minnesota is, it's, uh, people always you know, think it's always cold. And, uh, but no, it's, it gets hot here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'd like to visit out there. And like, where else? Montana. Oh, yeah. Montana's Mon- beautiful. Montana sounds like it'd be beautiful too. I mean, I've seen pictures. It's, it is beautiful. I've been there and, uh, it gets cold though. It gets much colder than it does here in Minnesota, I feel. Yeah. So a question we like to ask all of our guests is uh what are some goals that you have for 2024? Keep keep creating, keep making more content. One of my bigger goals though, I guess, when it comes to the YouTube, I'd like to do more how-tos. Like I want to show how a knife works or um maybe how it's made, take apart some stuff. I've got some videos in the idea or in the works, I should say right now. Um, I'm going to take the scales off an extra bug out that I got from uh, House of Blades, which nice. is going to be really cool. And I think people are going to be excited. So I'm going to make a video taking it apart, how to take it apart, how it works. And then I'm going to throw on some scales on there. I got some titanium, titanium, I should say, scales on there. Titanium. I think that's, that's kind of the goal. Just keep making more content and um, well, just... Just keep engaging with more people, collabing, um, doing yeah. some collabs with other makers and stuff. That's very valuable content, actually. How tos. Mm-hmm. I mean, when when I got into it, I was always on there. Oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? And yeah, that's, that's I, something I think would be awesome. I agree, and I think that's the content that lasts longer. Um, I think that's the content, like I like you just said. I also do the same thing. Or if I'm about to buy a knife. I want to do a video on almost every single knife I get, even if I don't own it. I want to just do a, a an overview of video. every knife. Like, I want to show off like the Ramon Chavez, so people, if they want to see that uh, they're going to buy the knife, maybe or they're looking and thinking about it, comparing it to. Because when I was buying this, I was looking for videos for it. But if don't you don't compare it to anything, I've got these two knives. I wanted to see if they were the same size. Yeah, they, yeah. they are. So that to me is valuable content and that's the stuff that I look for. So I want to make content to help other people like that. So that's another goal for 2024, more videos like that. Nice. Stuff. Yeah. Like even for the beer bong, just showing people the utility of a beer bong. Oh yeah. I'd love to show off. Yeah. Like you got a pry bar, you got a, you know, a bit driver on there. You know that, like I said, yeah. like you said, it's, it's content that people are looking for. Yeah, what makes it no valuable about, yeah, it's, it's very valuable. When you can add value to something, you're you're in there. Yep. And it's stuff that I want to do. I mean, it's I Yeah. I want to make stuff that makes me excited, makes me happy. If I'm not excited to make it, like if a company reaches out to me and it's like, "Hey, XYZ, eh, I don't really I don't really want to make content on that product that doesn't really make me excited." So, I'll say no. I'll say no to them and be like, "Sorry, I just I I have I had one recently reach out to me and it's like, my viewers, A, have nothing to do with that product. And I just, I don't know how I would help you out with it. So I, 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 I kindly am just going to say no. Yeah, you have values yep. and principles that you yep. stand by. Yep. What would you say some of those are? Integrity. I mean, it, I just, I, I am also very, very uh, easy to make happy. Um, like let's just use this knife for instance i love this knife and some people may not like it it's uh the damn design damn design i yeah. love this thing and some people yeah, may not cool. like it it looks I like a to... rosy on steroids yeah pretty much and i think oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> that i never even i never even realized that liner lock or sorry frame lock yeah yeah i think I need to be more negative, I guess. I'm very positive when it comes to things. Cause I think this is fun. I like it. I need to be more negative about it. And I feel like people might not think I'm real because I'm, I'm a very easy, pleasing person. I like lots of things. So I need, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm wrong to say, but I'd like to be more negative about things because I get gushy bad. over things. Like, I love this knife. And I, I do, but people may not believe me and uh I sometimes it takes that. time yeah you know you get the you buy something the initial reaction you're like dude i love it and then after a week or two you're like 
uh, actually i really don't like this about it. i really don't like that and maybe yeah well, opinions should be voiced because it yes. does make a good um good content for people who are trying to buy something and they're like yep. oh well, barbarian bonnie said this about it yep it might not might not be good for the brand but yeah and, and that's it's not honest. at the end of the day i'm not here for the brand i'm here to you know make content for the community and yeah I, i've almost wanted to make more videos like here's an overview video like i did one for a pen and i opened it up i did a mail call i want to do another video on it and talk about here's how it worked you know i almost need to make two videos an unboxing and just you know my my initial response like you said and then as i use the device or the, the pen or yeah. the knife or whatever the product i need to do an overview and then a review uh, afterwards yeah and then i can be and like i said i don't want to be a negative i'm not a negative person really but i i want to be more negative so i can honest. tell people the honest truth like the benchmade bug out is a great knife but it could be better xyz you know what i mean yeah no people i, I feel like people would love that i i agree because I, I would appreciate I it yeah yeah because at the end of the day people are spending their hard-earned money on these products 100 percent, 100 percent. and i hate when i see people talking about products that i have and I know it's a piece of shit and they're over there like, oh, this is such a great because they're sponsored by them and they're trying to get yep. paid. You know, that yep. that to me is like, come on, dude. And I tell myself, you know, this is a piece of shit knife like or item. Whatever. Why are you yep. sitting here doing it for money? I it's, understand people got to pay, but you got to pay their bills. But still. And that's one thing when you asked earlier how I want to separate myself. That's kind of it. Like. Yeah. I'm a small creator. And I think us smaller creators in the community kind of have that opportunity to, you know, we don't get paid by big companies. You know, we, well, at least I don't, <laughs> nobody pays me. Yeah. I mean, I want to be honest about the, the product because like you just said, you've had of it, but you know that now that person's like being all, Oh, that's a great product. You, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I, I don't want to be that person. I want to be, Hey, yeah. this knife is probably not going to, suit you yeah that will that will get you longevity yeah agreed because you're gonna attract those good cust i mean not customers um viewers <laughs> viewers just viewers. like hey yeah. yeah he keeps it he keeps it 100 with us and he's not just pushing products on us because they sponsored him or sent them a bunch of knives like yep even if a company sent me a knife to review I would rather give my honest opinion opinion and they're just like oh man this guy you know shit on us but Yep. Hey, I don't want my viewers to spend their hard-earned money on something that I don't yep. agree with. I've got three knives over here to my left that will be probably be where I'll probably be honest, really honest about them. And, and don't get me wrong, they're great knives. They're a great product. They're a great company. But I think there's some things about them that, uh, and that I think they should be known because. Uh, well, I'll just put it this way. They don't feel that great in hand. <laughs> I'll leave it at yeah. that. That's an upcoming video. Be honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This can also be good for the product maker too, because they can look at it and be like, hey, that, that was honest feedback right there. Yep. Yep. I wouldn't hate on that. So are there any future collabs that you're that you'd like to share with us that you're working on? Right now, um, tomorrow we will be collabing with Awesome Hank. I've got a Hank inside oh, that. A nice. uh, new Hank coming. Uh, swing the axe. And uh, okay, it's Is uh, your logo on there. Yeah, well, not my logo. It's it's gonna be kind of generic. I actually have looked at it. I'll show you really quick here. Awesome Hank makes them, in my opinion, some of the best ones. Yeah, I have one of your Hanks from them. Oh, do you? Which I one? Think, do you I got? think it's your your first one. It's the red and black pirate. It's like a map. oh, the dark one. The second yeah. one. Yeah, because yeah, I think your first one was all black or something, right? The or first one was uh, tan, and I don't have it with me, but the all right, oh. near me. But the first one was a tan one, and then we went into a dark version of that one, and then we okay. did an even darker one, a black and white version. Oh, that's the one I'm thinking about. Okay. But this will be the uh, the next one coming out here. Oh. Just to swing the axe. Oh, that's dope. A little topograph on there. Where's Where's my axe? Oh, you got, oh yeah, there you go. 
swinging the axe. Swing the axe. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's uh, the viewers. Yeah, I uh, I came up with the slogan. I, I it's not really. I didn't come up with it. It was something that I think is kind of like just do it, take a chance. You know, uh, I, it's kind of a, something I say. You know, you know, don't be so serious. Swing the. I don't know. I don't really have a real good reason why I came up with it. It just reminded yeah. me of Nike's "Just Do It," you know, or Peter McKinnon's <laughs> "Fly the Flag." You know, it's just kind of a slogan to, of a reminder, I guess. And that, I don't know. It was something I, him and I are collabing with, and uh, Dixon that makes trading sense. Post kind of, yeah, I like that. It's like just do it. Yep, swing it. Swing the X. Take a chance. Nice. Another one is so uh, with Dickinson Trading Post coming up. Uh, we got ideas. Um, for new pouches um he's been rocking some Ooh. stuff and been doing some design work with him and inky edc hopefully if, if if you're watching alan um we're still on and i didn't just spoil it <laughs> um, <laughs> we've been talking for a while and i've just been busy the time to design is so hard but we've got something in the works together which i'm pretty excited for nice oh i love i love their stuff i do too i do too Got a couple of their patches here. I thought I had one in front of me and I didn't. Oh yeah, that blacked out one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of a Dickinson trading post pouch. Which one the is Viper that? Viper actually. Oh, okay. I've got a few Viper A's. Oh, the X pack too. Okay. Yeah, this this pouch is pretty. It's yeah, pretty that's dope. pretty good. I it like the mesh because you can I see a... things. Yeah, I have a Dickinson uh, pouch, and it kind of reminds me of it, just a smaller version. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's got a couple different sizes. I personally got the, uh, um, I don't even know if he calls it the mini, but it's it's mm -hmm. roughly about that Final big. Show. It's the perfect size. It's a, probably the size of a data crew water slider, I'd say. Okay. Which we so, all see that's the palm, the perfect size. So when you're collabing with these people, what are you looking for? What's your not, goal with that? much. Um, just doing fun stuff. Um, I used to be a graphic designer, so art was my big thing. And uh, I, what am I looking for? Honestly, just just being part of the community. Let me rephrase that. I didn't mean to say what are you looking for. What is your role in the collabing process? Is what I. Oh yeah, to say. my role is generally just design work. Um, putting out okay. the, the the graphics and stuff like that. Putting in you know my little touch to. You know, you know, I can't, I can't make a pouch for Dickinson's training post. I can't make a Hank. Like, you know, Art makes all these by hand. And, yeah. Uh, these are his. He puts the beads on there. He puts the grommets on there. He sews them and all that stuff. I do the artwork. I just nice. do the design work. And no, that's kind awesome. of my role and put my little touch to it. The barbarian touch, I guess you could say. Well, that's, that's half of it. Yeah. Um. So. Do you want to show us what you're carrying on you today? You showed us a couple of things, but what are you going to leave yeah. the house with today? Um, left the house, to bring the kids to daycare. My Monterey Watch Co. This is the uh, Black Tip 42. I put a NATO strap on there. Nice. Reminds me of uh, the nice. Omega from Spectre 007. So that was the watch. Mm -hmm. um, the beer bomb, of course, I showed you that earlier. I got that on the uh, the Cruiser. I slipped it nice. in here. And then uh, I got a polka pen. I'm a huge fan of these. They're super light. They're cheap. Just a oh, plastic yeah. oh, pen. If I lose it, extend. I'll just go get another one. Yeah. It's super easy to put in your pocket or on the Cruiser 4.0. Put that right and on small. there. Yeah. And you can make it a full size. So then I got the Cruiser 4.0. A few Ranger eyes on there. Patches, Rees, however that, you want to call them. That S Ranger eye. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. A few of those. That was the wallet I wore today, and I showed you I carried the Chavez, of course. That's the street, the baby. And what else did? I, oh, my pouch. I I usually don't put this in my pocket. Some people do. I don't. This is a Dickinson Training Post pouch. Let's see here. So I got a few patches, Ranger eyes on there. A little uh, key fob from. <laughs> The shark lock. Oh, nice. Let me get you closer for you if you need. Got it. 
And then uh, inside there, I've got my Wubin, the Owl X3 flashlight. I'm just Love checking those. it out, testing it out here. It rotates 180 degrees. Can't do it one-handed. I, I just started carrying it. You can rotate. It's one of my favorite lights. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be one of my favorite ones, really. I love the opportunity that you can clip it like here on your backpack or something like that. And then yeah. you can flip it around. It's really nice. And the, and the charger is really fun. I don't know if. Yeah, and it's got a red light. And you can turn the blue light off of the. Yes, the save battery, which is actually on right now. No, on the light itself. You see how. Oh. You see how it. Oh, wait. I turned it off. You got yours turned off. So you see how there's a blue light on the side? Yeah. You can turn Actually, that off. I think mine is off. Yeah, mine is off. Oh, okay, yeah. Five rapid clicks turns it off. Yep. I learned, though, I'm going to take this camping, that if I turn this on, I've now got a nightlight. Like diffuser. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think this is probably going to be one of my favorite ones. I did it's like so the, the 7, the E7, because it has a headlamp, and you can put a bigger yeah. battery in there. I thought this was going to be one of my favorite ones until this got in hand. So I've been carrying it quite a bit and uh, I'm actually working on a video on that one too. The rotating um, head is very clutch. I, that yeah, you can rotate it 180, so you can use it as what I call a normal flashlight. Yeah. And you can rotate it. I, I like it. Magnetic. I mean, boom. you can even hold it like this. You can have it like this. Oh yeah. One Just of my favorite things to like do this. is, uh, Let's say you stab this into like a tree. And oh, then yeah. you can rotate. Yeah, this light is just I mean, it's, it's something else. It's so versatile. I mean, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's I think it's probably gonna be my one of my new favorite ones. I used to always carry an Olight IT3 and I, I don't carry it hardly at all anymore since I've been carrying the Wubin. It's just you know, bigger, but oh yeah. Why? It's not a but it's thin, it doesn't but... take up that much space because it's so flat. Yeah, I went on a night hike with it the other day while it was oh, nice. pouring rain, and this thing still good. Well, you can, like I said, you could clip it onto your hat. <laughs> there, there you, you go. go. There you go. You got a night light. I was oh, using the I red light on it too. Oh, the red light. Yeah, I see. I would use that for duck hunting oh. when I'm duck hunting because. I'm notorious for losing stuff in the boat or the blind. So I use that <laughs> red light on from other flashlights and uh, that that's going to come yeah. in clutch. I think what else I shove in the pouch here, a little, uh, that uh, daily carry coal, little tiny little pry. Oh, that's cool. A little bottle opener. It just, it yeah, fit like in the that. pouch. It was just the one I grabbed for the, this week. Cause it's pretty much all week yeah. carry fingernail clippers. You gotta have fingernail clippers. Oh, mandatory. Uh, one of my kids had a hangnail on the way to daycare one morning. He literally made me turn around and get a, get a fingernail clippers because he wasn't going to let me take a knife to it. So I was like, okay. So ever since then, fingernail clippers in the pouch. And yes. then uh, I've got a Hank from Awesome Hank. This is the one without a uh, lanyard. Oh, that's cool. Really? The camo? Yeah. Black I. Camo? I'm a fan of multi-cam, but this is the black and gray. I'm my colors. I mean, if you ever see me out and about gray sweatshirt, black hat, it's just, or orange. Yeah. It, that's me. Oh yeah. And then drop it again. A coin. I got a awesome Hank coin and I collabed on this one. This is the oh, that's cool. coin that matches the Hank that you got. Yeah. And then on the back there, it's the, uh, the compass compass. With the island okay. in the middle. That was a coin I designed. Did you, have, did you have different colors again? of it? There is a gold one, or I guess maybe okay, brass, yeah. and then the black one. The black was limited for a while, and I I got to have black. It's just yeah, just me. I mean, everything I carry is black and whatever. Black. It's just just me. Although I'm moving into titanium. I think titanium is going to take over. I'm getting really I'm gray. Another gray thing. I think titanium yeah. is going to be the next thing. And then nice. last last thing in the pocket, the Leatherman Signal. Oh, that thing's clutch. Bottle opener. You don't have to open it up to get a new knife. I mean, it's one-handed. 
I had this in the Leatherman Wave Plus in hand, and it was lighter. I like the uh, the hammer. <laughs> I don't know how many times a hammer EDC hammer is the best thing in the world. So you got that right. back there, best thing in the it's world. Got a hammer. It's got a flint rod. Oh, it's got yeah. a whistle. Got a whistle. Pocket clip is huge. I put that right in the pocket. Left pocket. Right pocket's got the knife. Yeah, it's it's got everything. Yeah, it's a great one. It doesn't have a scissors. It's got a Which, knife. We got a knife. <laughs> just, I always I always ask people, yeah. well, do you really need a scissors? Just use your knife. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> I actually used this the Not other the same, day, but it still could be used. Oh, oh yeah, it, it, it. I just my more finesse with a with an the scissors maybe. The uh, most recent thing I used was the uh, little bottle opener. My wife had a okay. uh, can of peaches or something like that. I think it was peaches, and she wanted to pour the uh, liquid out. And I was like, "Oh, I got just the tool," and popped around and popped made a around. hole. Yeah, it was so another another EDC thing that came in clutch. It was on me. I didn't have to go to the <laughs> drawer or anything like that. Yeah. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this week's episode. Thank you, Bronny, for being on the show this week. Thank you to our viewers. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, peace. Swing the axe. Swing the axe.